So what we are seeing over here is an actual data set which I took from Kegel and it has the salaries of uh, data analyst jobs okay uh, across different countries. So for now I am interested in only US uh, data of data analysts okay. So let me just uh, what I am doing here is I am removing all the records which I don't want from this data set because this is a secondary data set I have to just pick up only those uh, rows which are needed for me. So that is what I am doing here I am filtering out the data to show only the details which I am looking for okay. So I am just looking for senior experts in data analysis from US. So from them I only need the salary in USD because I just want to find out what would be the salary which I have to pay. What is the expected salary that I can expect from uh, to give from uh, to them if I were to hire one of them. So for that first I will find out the maximum and minimum okay. And um, let's see how many observations I got. I think I got 47 observations. So I have data from 47 data points okay. So this is a discrete data set right now. Let us try to convert it into a um, continuous data. Suppose say let me take around 15, 14 or 15 classes. So if I am to give 14 classes I will need how many class interval how many what would be my class interval that is what I am finding. So if I take 10,000 I will end up with 15 classes why because there is a I have given maximum as 20, uh, 200,000 and since 200,000 is a perfect multiple of 10,000 then it will come as an upper limit then I will need one more class to put it in a lower limit why because I am going for the exclusive method here not the inclusive method. So I will quickly just uh, fill up the lower and upper limits of my continuous distribution okay. So next is um, what we have to do is we have to find out the frequency in each of these classes. So what I will do is I will go and check from 60,000 to 70,000 how many people are there. I have two people like that from 70 to 80 I didn't have any burn. 80 to 90 I have four people so like that I will be filling up for the rest of the frequencies okay. So once that I have filled up the lower and upper limits and the frequencies I want to my aim is to find out the salary which I will be expected to pay the salary which is expected to be paid out if I were to hire a data scientist. So for that I will make use of the mean median and mode to find out the what is the average in the market and maybe I will have to offer a little bit above or almost in the same range to get prop, uh, get um, sufficiently skilled talent I cannot be I need not give it more. Uh, than what is the market average too much more or it should not be too less than the market average because then I will not be able to attract good enough resources. So since now I am dealing with a continuous distribution I will have to find the mean using the continuous distributions formula. So for that I have to find the class midpoint. So to find the class midpoint we have to uh, my, uh, subtract the upper from the lower limit divided by 2 and, multi uh, and add it to the lower limit. And then once I have my class midpoint I have to multiply it with the frequency to get the actual value for that class right. And once I have these details I can easily find out the mean by using the formula which we saw in the previous video right. So let us apply uh, that formula into finding the mean. So here we have the arithmetic mean but now if you see there are a few frequencies there are a few salary limits okay the few classes where there is no salary at all like there are no people in those salary ranges okay so they automatically just have a zero in my um, frequency uh, in the value observation right made point into frequency but there is one which has 20,000 it is like an outlier so I don't have to give that much of a consideration to that outlier because that would I believe will unduly affect my mean. So what I will do is I will give weights to each of these classes and each of these frequencies and I will give the lowest weight to this particular observation that is my outlier of 20 million sorry 200 1000. So uh, what I will do is for easiness of computation I will keep my total weight as 100 and accordingly I will give the weights and I can see that most number of people have a salary either between 90,000 and 100,000 or 110 to 120,000 that is where my most of the uh, most of the people have concentration and also from 100,000 to 110,000 so my weight will be concentrated in that I want my mean to be mostly affected by just that.
now i have to find out weight into the midpoint to find out the weighted mean and i will divide it by my total weightage that is the formula so let me apply that so accordingly what i am finding is my total my weighted mean is a little bit less than my arithmetic mean why because now the undue effect of that outlier has reduced that is the reason why and my mean is mostly influenced by those values which tend to occur the most now since this is a normal discrete distribution it is very easy for me to find out the discrete mean as well and when you compare the arithmetic mean weighted mean and discrete mean you can find that though they are a bit different they are not great vastly different they are almost in the same range maybe a difference of $2000 with from each of these so usually it happens like that only now moving forward let us see how to find the median now as we all know median is that value which divides the entire population into two groups so if there are total 47 then that would mean dividing into two groups means maybe 23 or 24 people each right so actually it comes to 23.5 we can take it as 24 so we'll find out the cumulative frequency and 23.5 that is 24 lies in this class that is 110,000 to yeah 110 to 120,000 that is my median class so i know the median classes uh, lower limit the frequency the width and the preceding frequency i have everything here with me to compute the median of this particular data set so i'll apply the formula to calculate the median so i've calculated the median also as you can see it is a little bit less than my mean my median is a little bit less than my mean but not by far again that we can see there's almost a two thousand to three thousand dollars difference that's it next we are trying interested in finding the mode now as you can see there are two classes with the same number of mode right same number of same frequency there is 90 to 100,000 which have 9 as frequency and 110 to 120 having 9 as frequency when we talk about this continuous frequency distribution it is a bimodal distribution both of these are modes but we have converted this frequency distribution from normal sorry discrete to continuous and since we are using a tool like excel it is very easy for us to actually find the mean by simply creating a pivot table okay so what i'm going to do is i'll create a pivot table to find out the actual mode of this particular data set so as you can see here by applying the pivot i can easily find that the count the maximum count came for salary uh, which had value 90,320 so that is the most number of people have this as frequency now from my mean median and mode i can say that my salary can range from around uh, 80 or uh, 85 to 90,000 uh, 90, and maybe i can give a maximum of 120 usd so that would be my salary range and ideally since uh, 90,330 is the range that is fixed i can perhaps go up to 110 if it is a sufficiently skilled candidate but my upper limit i can set it as 120 this is just an observation now setting salary is not this simple there will be a lot of other things like what is the demand and what is the supply all those things all all of them come into picture when we finally decide on it but this is how we start with that journey of setting a salary now if you guys are interested to work with such data sets by yourself I downloaded this data from kegel.com. You can also do the same. I think you will have to create an account over there, but then you will have a lot of real data sets. Now, this data set had data up till the year 2022, actually. Three years data it had, 2021 20, and 22. So, it is a very good source of secondary data. But as with any secondary source, use it with a pinch of salt. So, I hope uh, this demo was useful for you you understood how actually these things come into picture when you do the data analysis path for setting out decisions okay this is what happens in an organization while you're doing business administration this is what is happening in the back end i hope you guys got that that idea because we are not simply studying an mba just for the sake of it right we need to understand it we might be wishing to start a business or we might be wanting to go and join a business in a higher position in a managerial position so you need to know what you will do with all the knowledge that you 
are learning here so that is why i created this video i hope it has come of use to you guys and if you want such more videos just let me know in the comments uh, give this video a like because it will be an encouragement for me also to provide such content to you in the future thank you so much and i hope to see you all in the next class